Disclaimer. This is an opinion piece. The Grammys being rigged by the Academy is strictly my opinion based on nominations and award distribution results. In other words, my opinion is based on speculation and is not supposed to be taken too seriously. This opinion is somewhat contradictory to the way the Grammys is said to work, aka the Academy does the nominations and peers vote. And uh, this video is for entertainment purposes only. It is not intended to be informative and it is not intended to be slanderous. The only part of this video you should take seriously is that Lana is seriously overdue for a Grammy. Hey guys, it's Piper. I need to bitch about the Grammys. Now, before we begin, I want to make one thing clear. I'm not mad that Billie Eilish won awards. That would be weird since I'm a fan of hers as well, albeit a casual one. I'm mad that they gave her basically every award anyone cared about to create some weird teenage Adele narrative that gets headlines revved up instead of awarding other musicians who also deserve the recognition and in spite of Billie's very predictable discomfort. Youngest Grammy winner wins big. <sighs> And this includes Lana Del Rey, who I think is perhaps the most underrated musician of our time. More so by critics and the Academy than people on the street nowadays, though her public reception was originally quite polarizing and brought her a lot of early notoriety. First, before I start my rant on the 62nd Grammys, let me remind you why Lana Del Rey is overdue, for one, and why the fact that she still hasn't won one to this day, over like eight years, proves that the Grammys are just a joke and a sacred cash cow at this point. First, and this is the most important point in my opinion, Lana paved the way for other artists that are really popular today. Pop music, particularly like an alternative pop music, was pretty damn boring and generic before alternative stars like Lana and Marina revolutionized it in like 2011 through 2012. If you disagree, I have to assume that you're too young to remember what I call the dark age of pop. I mean, when I was in high school, it took Lady Gaga hitting the scene to convince me that pop music wasn't just garbage with one or two gems mixed in, like Gwen Stefani. It was the age of auto-tune trash and milkshake. Every time someone turned the radio to pop, I put in my mp3 player and tried to drown out the noise with my favorite goth bands. So bad for my hearing, but anyone who lived through that era understands I had no choice. Pop was tragic back then and I was convinced it had died in the 90s, never to recover. Then Gaga came and things slowly started to get better. And then Lana came and we finally had acts like Halsey, Lord, and eventually Billie Eilish. Lana has yet to be recognized for these contributions and she really should be. I'm not going to sit here and say if there was no Lana, there would be no Billy, because Billy becoming famous was an inevitability and not just some SoundCloud accident despite popular narrative because, you know, the industry just hates women and has to downplay their success at every turn, but Billy's music would not be the same without Lana. Billy even cites her as an influence, and how could she not when it's just so obvious you can't listen to Billy without hearing Lana. Lana didn't win the Billboard Trailblazer Award for no reason. Lana revolutionized the way one could really express themselves through pop music. You know, pop used to be so annoying and surface level trash. And now we finally have pop that's meaningful and Lana is partly responsible for that. She revived old music conventions and from the hits of the 70s and revamped them for the modern era. She sang about dark subjects that were taboo or untypical at the time. I think the word is atypical, excuse me, whatever. She was truly ahead of her time. That's what I'm trying to say. And I think that's why, yeah, I think that's part of why critics dismissed her so early on in her career. In 2012, after her infamous Saturday Night Live performance where she had the nerve to get stage fright and mess up in front of a large audience, Foster Kamer from The Observer wrote, Ms. Del Rey is no stranger to controversy. Long story short, she's a failed pop singer who got lip injections, changed her name, and now has a great backstory about living in a trailer that makes her New Jersey chanteuse stick has urban outfitters ready as a pair of tight Levi's. I think this comment is pretty reflective of how critics and people in general treated her. 
if you haven't seen the SNL performance, it's on her channel still. Blue Jeans was the worst. As many viewers have pointed out, it sounds like all her personalities are fighting each other for control. You, you can feel the tension in her voice. Now, all of her performances back then were plagued by stage fright, so it wasn't anything new. I remember watching her first ever live performance and she got so nervous she turned around and faced the band instead of the audience. But uh, the thing is, people were criticizing Saturday Night Live for putting her on before she even performed there. So she was already under an immense amount of pressure as critics were whining that someone who didn't even have an album at, out yet was going to perform on SNL as if SNL is some big deal and not a joke. Kind of like how the Grammys is paradoxically both of those things at the same time. Okay, I'm getting off track. <coughs> Point is, they wanted her to fail, they got what they wanted, and then they proceeded to bitch about it, like they weren't partially responsible. <laughs> I swear, I'm starting to think critics are just toxic people in general. The Saturday Night Live performance was part of the reason she was treated the way she was. People acted like Lana succeeded not because her music was good, but because she was manufactured. How did they get manufactured out of such revolutionary music, you young people are asking? Well, it was because she used other stage names in the past before becoming famous. The Scandal. Also, she had an album that was previously pulled from the shelves because of, like, a contract being bought out by some other label or something. I don't remember the details. There's a pretty good video on this by Middle Eight called The Authenticity of Lana Del Rey. Uh, though I would argue that she wasn't using a persona, she just doesn't have a fixed personality and people don't understand this to this very day, you know? She says so herself in the monologue of her video for Ride. I was and still am the same way, so I feel it. Sometimes I want a daddy. Sometimes I want to be the daddy. Constant struggle. I have more personalities than Myers-Briggs. Anywho, basically Lana was not what people were used to seeing and she was met with a lot of vitriol. Everything she did was mocked by critics and basically everyone in general. Even if they liked her music, they always felt the need to slap in some random rant about her image or how fake she was. Some people even accused her father of bankrolling her career, which was not true. People cited her messing up the SNL performance as evidence she couldn't actually sing, even though there was plenty of proof out there in interviews that she could. She just wasn't a natural performer, and they didn't bother to look past the SNL performance. They'd rather stupidly think that her voice was digitally remastered to the point where it was unrecognizable on her studio recordings. In reality, Lana is a great singer with a, about, I think she has the widest vocal range I've ever noticed from anyone. Of course, she got shit on for that too, because no one had ever heard someone sing so high and so low on the same track before. People called it jarring, and uh, perhaps it was because it was something that just simply wasn't conventional in music at the time. Fast forward a few years, she's inspired a lot of other artists who then get praised for doing the same things she was criticized for, both in terms of her sound and of her image. So, what happened? Well, I guess people eventually got used to her sound after it started to permeate the market more, and people started to forget the SNL performance. And of course, other singers didn't have the stigma of the SNL performance. But not enough people have acknowledged that Born to Die was not a bad album. It was just so groundbreaking that people didn't receive it well. I'd actually say that it aged very well and is one of her best works. I'm not good at ranking things, but it's hovering around ultraviolence and Norman f***ing Rockwell in my heart. I still listen to it regularly. Her music is so retro and yet so modern. It makes you famished for a time and a place that doesn't really exist and never did. But instead of embracing her, critics just used the SNL performance to justify their hate. Do you want to defend Lana? Too bad. Some angry old bastard is going to come and remind you that she flopped on SNL and therefore they're right and you're wrong. As if like 10 minutes of rapidly increasing stage fright matters more than an entire album, great songs. If you ask me, who cares if she was a great performer or not? Like, not when her music just completely altered the landscape of pop forever. Who dare calleth me at this hour? 
Anyway, where was I? You know, despite it being considered alternative, it really affected pop. You know, I don't- I personally just don't give a shit about the genre. Good music is good music, no matter what box you try to shove it in. Excuse me. Of course, I'm glad the critics have changed their mind. You know, I remember when Pitchfork rated Lana a 5.5 for Born to Die and called it the album equivalent of a faked orgasm. And now, the same publication has ranked NFR a 9.4 and says, Hope is dangerous because women are rarely taken seriously from matters of authenticity to cases of assault. And that's nice and all, but I want them to fucking apologize. I, I don't know what it is. They've consistently given her sevens for works in between all these. And now they're going to proclaim her one of America's greatest loving songwriters as if they were saying that all along. <laughs> Fuck you and all your contributors, Pitchfork. Now, I have another point for why Lana really deserves a Grammy. On top of being so influential, Lana is one of the most prolific artists ever. And I'm not just talking about, like, her hundreds of unreleased songs. Usually when someone shits out a new album every year or two, they all suck, but not Lana. She always delivers. She has been consistent throughout her entire career. She hasn't released a single flop. All of her songs are amazing. By the time I start to tire myself out from her newest release, there's always another one right around the corner and it's always beautiful. You know, to me, that consistency is far more valuable than putting out an okay album that has a couple of hits on it. Like when Tyra won season two of Drag Race. So, if not for Born to Die, if not for ultraviolence, if not for Norman f***ing Rockwell, when will she get a Grammy? So you're probably wondering, well then, Piper, which of Billy's awards that she didn't seem to want very much would you have given to Lana? Well, that's easy. Both of the ones she was nominated for, honestly. But I haven't heard Ariana Grande's album yet, though, so I I'm, I'm so damn behind on everyone's music. So... Let's just focus on the category for best song, which to clarify, there is a difference between best record and best song. Best record is for the performer. Best song is for like composition and songwriting. You know, the thing Lana excels at and prioritizes. She's a poet first, a singer second, her words. I can see Bad Guy winning best record, which it did, but best song? Bad Guy shouldn't have been, even been nominated in that category. When the Party's Over should have been Billy's nomination. It wasn't much less popular than Bad Guy, and the lyrics are infinitely better. Maybe even the best example of hers and Phineas's writing skills, but... <sighs> Bad Guy doesn't even compare to When the Party's Over. Or anything Lana Del Rey wrote for NFR. I'm not sorry. I'm not going to do a full analysis, but here's a little bit about why I don't like that song. You know, it contains a series of lyrics, all with ending in guy for four lines, instead of like a rhyme or something. Then there's type for three, and it's interrupted by a jarring slant rhyme in the middle. So it's not a bad song, particularly accounting for her young age. Though as a fan, I am biased, but it's not exactly a songwriting marvel. I don't get why it's so much more popular than her other songs, because I actually think it's the worst one on her album lyrically and yet it wins best song, a category for songwriting. <laughs> a song with awkward meta lyrics like, my mommy likes to sing along with me, but she won't sing this song if she reads all the lyrics, beat out Norman fucking Rockwell. Which incidentally is also not Lana's best song off NFR. If you ask me, it's bartender. Especially because of that beautiful wordplay where she broke up the words bar and tender by singing the T in a way that sounds like a camera shutter. YouTube would skewer me for using a clip, so you're gonna have to deal with my bad singing. It's when she goes, bar tender. You know, like that, except better. The whole song is about fame, basically, ruining her life, and I'm paraphrasing, but God. How on earth did this song escape nomination for a songwriting award? It, unless this is all just a popularity contest, you know, did it make the Academy feel guilty or something? I could make a whole video on why I think Bartender is the best song written in the last decade. That's right, the whole decade. And I stand a whole lot of artists, and I'm telling you right now, Bartender is the best composition ever written. 
ever. <laughs> it's that I've heard anyway. It's just so infinitely clever with all the wordplay and the metaphors. I just oh, take me now, my queen. But instead of choosing any song off Norman fucking Rockwell, they chose a song with a catchy beat. Which defies the whole purpose of the award. I, w I will never forgive them for snubbing Lana for this award. It had her name written all over it. To me, the fact that NFR lost to bad guy, not even to when the party's over, but to bad guy, proves that the Grammys isn't about awarding the best to the best. It's about getting those views and dollars. I am convinced they just chose to give a bunch of awards to one person, not because they thought one person deserved them all, but because they got more he they get more headlines when they do that. So this whole thing, in my opinion, is just the Grammys running gag of giving an excessive amount of awards to one person. <laughs> it's degrading to everyone, including Billy, who again didn't seem very comfortable winning it back to back like that, and who would, especially at her age. She even said she thought Ariana should have won Best Album. Imagine being so uncomfortable winning an award that you practically reject it on stage. A teenage girl made a more authentic decision than a panel of money-hungry judges. Remember that next time you want to shit on teenage girls as a demographic. <laughs> uh, you know, people keep pushing this false narrative that Billy was just some clueless teenager who was f***ing around making up songs and then she posted one to SoundCloud and it magically went viral out of the blue. That's how they're selling her with this dream come true that's perfectly tailored for our fame-hungry generation. And there's a small kernel of truth in that story, but when you keep in mind that her brother was an actor and a producer and her mother teaches songwriting classes and she had all these resources and blah 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 blah. <coughs> Excuse me. You start to realize that Billy becoming famous was an inevitability, not some random event. Sorry to kill the dreams of every 13-year-old, but you need more than just luck and talent. You need connections, and I really hate this telling of the story because it ignores that Billy put in a, har a lot of hard work so they could have their stupid famous by accident story. And yes, I'm sure you know where I'm going with this. I am accusing the Academy of banking off of this story to generate more press. Oh wow, four years ago she was just some dumb teen and now she has 400 Grammys for her only song that matters. What a great story to tell. You should see me in a crown? What's that? Your grandma hasn't heard of that song, so we haven't either. When the party's over? I mean, it's powerful lyrically, but the beat just isn't immediately addictive, so we don't want it. Besides, Bad Guy has millions more views on YouTube. The algorithm is going to lap this up. Can you hear that jingling in the distance? That's the sound of ad revenue. Now, you may be tempted to say, but Piper, that's a lot of speculation. You're accusing the Academy of using a teenage girl to generate shock press and get views from her large fan base who consists mostly of young people with lots of free time with no evidence, and I agree. But when the nominations themselves were curated so badly, it's hard to think they had any genuine reason for giving Billy five Grammy Awards, her brother two, and Lana Del Rey zero. And here's why it's really unfair to Billy too, no matter how you look at it. She's going to improve a lot as an artist. This is not anything near the peak of her career, unless she decides to quit here. But she's being awarded as if it is. So basically what we have here is a shareworthy story at the price of her embarrassment, when in reality, Billie Eilish is taking home a shit ton of Grammy Awards for what I guarantee will go down in history as her worst, least polished album ever. Because if this is what she can do as a teen, imagine what she'll achieve as an adult. I won't be surprised if she spends the rest of her life dissatisfied, more so than she already is, I mean, because the crowning moment of her career was wasted on the album that got her started. So commercially and artistically, Billie is going to continue to outperform herself, but she is never going to be recognized like this again. They'll do her like they did Lord. The Academy will find a new teenage it girl and treat her like shit because they're shit. Meanwhile, I'm sure Billie's getting a ton of hate online. I don't even have to look. There's a reason I don't get on Twitter anymore. It's because people don't think before they tweet. 
Guys, listen, I understand why y'all are mad, but it's not Billy's fault. She won an award that other people deserved more. Like, please, blame the Academy for this. This is far from the first time they've done something stupid. I mean, fuck. Marina has never been nominated, not even for Electra Heart. And what about Taylor? Hell, no wonder she didn't go this year. The Grammys could send me a personal invitation in the mail, and I still wouldn't go. I'd get a better viewing experience watching it on mute at a sports bar, occasionally looking up while I work on book two. May as well stay home with my cats. No wonder Lana picked up her dress for this last minute at the mall. She probably wasn't even gonna go. <laughs> Major publications can continue acting like Billy sweeping the Grammys over other nominees made an iota of sense, but I'm not gonna suck the Academy's d*** just so I can live in their shadow. This was a publicity stunt, nothing more, I will regard it as such. And I don't think I'll be able to take them seriously ever again after this. As a matter of fact, the only reason I took them seriously before is because I don't have cable. That's it. My only other Grammy opinion is that Little Nas X was best dressed. Please rate, subscribe, and blessed be motherfuckers. Ah!